Now this is gonna be cool. Hello again there friends and fans, Raptor here, and welcome to our first look at First Dwarf, a game that has a free playtest on Steam and multiple demos that is really, really interesting looking. I actually took a look at the trailer of this one during one of our live streams. Uh, a dev or a publisher or somebody related to this game sent me a DM and said, hey, check out our trailer, and I jumped over to IGN to see about 15 minutes worth of mixed gameplay and actual footage explaining the game. And this looks like it's going to be a real banger. We get to play as a dwarf who also has a mech, who also has an airship. We get to build villages, and we get to do a lot with automation and also uh, managing the people in those villages. There's some really good-looking combat, and the game is also multiplayer and coming out sometime soon. So welcome aboard. Good to see you all here. This is certainly a game that I've had on my wish list. I didn't even realize it until I took a look at the Steam store page, and now I finally get to play. Apparently, the playtest just dropped, so we're going to take our first look at this one, and this is certainly one that I want to try to get a friend with and or play on my own when it releases. So, if you'd like to see more of this game, make sure you smash that like button to let YouTube know you'd like to see more of First Dwarf and, of course, things from this channel. And make sure you subscribe to and turn on that notification bell and glory to Raptoria down... Go oh, ah, Glory to Raptoria down below in that comment section. Yeah, there you go. Hell yeah! As we rocket towards 2 million subscribers and, of course, as we build more and more cool villages and many cool games. Right, without further ado, let's go ahead and take our first look at First Dwarf the playtest of a game coming soon. Let's go. Wow. Immediately a fantastic animation style for the intro to this game. Really feels like watching a kid's movie or something back from the 80s or 90s. Uh, some things come to mind, but let me know what you think about that intro. Let's get started. Boy, we got to work on our driving. Damn. Oh. Thank heavens you're still breathing. What was that storm? It wasn't natural, for sure. Oh. But next time, maybe work on your landing technique. For sure. Wow. Great art style immediately. Not only for the uh, intro, but also for the, the game itself. Um, not necessarily uh, minimalist at all. A little less on the character, but the world is beautiful. I like it. A good mix of different things. And uh, a UI that's not too cluttered. And a beautiful, lush environment. Lots of little trees flowers grass and our mech i'm gonna get this thing repaired how do we do that just look at this mech that's what i call good dwarf workmanship a few dents that's all i'll fix them right away almost there looks like we got ourselves a health bar on the top and then something for 220 which could be maybe mana which we can see the mana tank on the back there. I think that gives us special abilities like to boost like a jetpack and maybe some special attacks for our mech too. The mech is ready. Time to get in. All right. Let's hop on. Now, let's see what's left of the airship. <laughs> Probably not much. She hit uh, pretty hard. And there's the rudder. The chimney. Broken engine here. A hammer and the hull. I assume uh, we'll have to repair this ship as well to go to other islands and then eventually continue our adventure. Let's go ahead and see if there's anything we can pick up by hand. Got our hammer here. Oh, my hammer. Good thing it didn't fall far. 
Oh, just picking up the whole hole and putting it in our pocket. All right. And there's the roof there. Nothing else in the back, it looks like. And we got some pieces over here. Some gears. And a lamp. All right, let's get back to our mech. Now, I think our mech can do exactly what we can, too, in terms of, like, chopping things down and being a little bit more effective at it. Salvaged what I could. We can look around. Some pieces might have landed elsewhere, but I think it's a good spot. Just smell the forest. Time to build a base. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, but it really reminds me of Lightyear Frontier with having the mech to be able to cut down trees and whatnot. So that's about the end of the similarities between the two. Uh, but yet another great mech game earlier uh, this year. What is this thing? Hmm, looks like some large growth. Uh, control to enter build mode. Ah, oh, look at that. So we can build a base out of the leftover pieces from our ship. Looks like there's some pretty good spot uh, space over here to build some stuff. Now, from what I saw in their tutorial slash 15-minute intro video, it looks like a good idea to build up against a cliff and then uh, kind of build some defenses that way. In fact, I'm going to try to model my base after what I saw there, too, where they put up some defensive walls here with some turrets and then walls around the whole front of the camp to where the most important thing is this, uh, the mana, where we could build a mana mine or well to pump that stuff out. Essentially, think of it like fuel, oil, coal, whatever you want to. That's where all of our powers are going to come from. So let's go ahead and build our base right around here, I suppose. How do we rotate clockwise? Oh, with the arrow keys? Oh, that's a little awkward. I wish I could use R so that way I don't have to move my hand. I think this is also playable with a controller, too, so that might be a thing. And for those of you wanting to play on console, I'm not exactly sure if and when this has a release date a for console. Wood and stone, or how they say it. All right, let's go ahead and get 120 wood. We're missing 50. Oh. Ah, so we could use the axe as a tool, but also as a weapon. Looks like we have some multiple attack abilities or stances. Man, those trees go flying, too. Look at that. And same with the stone. Pretty cool to be able to use the uh, kind of uh, different attack abilities that way. Okay, a little bit more wood, and we're good. We have some wood. Now it's time for stone. Finally. Oh, berries. Wood dries or rots. And stone lasts for ages. Yeah. You can build a shelter out of wood, but you cannot build a house without stone. That's true. We got a little raven on our back, too, which I think serves as maybe a... There's a like an early warning system that we can build, and the raven will go and live in there and tell us when enemies are on the way. And then, of course, the little dragon can be used as a drone, too, to kind of fly around and uh, do other side quests and things like that, too. We need to find a quarry? Or maybe find a quarry. That might be a, a typo. I'm not sure. It could be m marked on the map. Looks like that's it right there, maybe. Stone. Yeah, so we're building a quarry. It's all right, just a like little a typo. Place to dig. Wait a moment. Look at these scratches. Oh, yeah. Been here before us. A rock must have broken off. That's it. These are wild lands. We are the first to explore here. What's that sound? Uh-oh. Purple. What is it? That purple stuff. I think something that doesn't want to be our friend. Uh-oh. Hi there. Wonder if I can block. I can with right click. Let's see if we can parry. Oh, yep. Looks like there is a little bit of a parry system. Let's see if we take damage from blocking. Uh, no, but we do have a block that will eventually run out. Let's see if we can side skirt behind this guy. Nice. But this? I think it used to be a wild animal. Yeah, it sure did. What earth happened to it. I'm not sure, but I think it was something even the songs are afraid to mention. Ooh. Some sort of a portal to hell in there. Uh, destroy the monster nest. Okay. Maybe more monsters will come out. Do a charged attack. There we go, about halfway. Now I'm assuming at more 
Uh, advanced levels, there's probably going to be more enemies defending these and flooding out of the uh, portals, too. Done. No, such things never appear one at a time. Yeah. It's like an illness spreading through the body. It's only the beginning. Well, here we have a stone to smash. Cool. All right, let's get some more stone. I guess we use our axe for both cutting down trees and for mining, too. Although there is a circle menu with tab that allows us to switch between our mech, our dragon, and our main character there, and then eventually the camp itself. Have you done enough digging? Yes, that's it. Now we can build a well on the mana spring. The colony buildings need mana just like my armor. Okay. Let's switch between different constructions then. So there's our mana pipeline. We could actually uh, have to build up uh, almost like a power lines or electricity. We have to connect everything together. So here we can build our mana pipeline, our mana well, which we're going to build right there. And then we should be able to connect the two with the pipeline. I could dig stone all day, but I've sure had enough of cutting wood. It's high time to build a sawmill and power it up with a mana pipeline. Ooh, okay. I'd like to do that instead. Tab to go to resources. And there we go. We have our little uh, logging camp. Uh, build it next to the forest. That'd be over here. Reminds me a little bit of they are billions with these impassable forests this way. And some of the defenses in combat does too. And, of course, the uh, luckily the construction's automatic. So all we got to do is just wait a little bit and magic will happen. There we go. All right, let's build this to... Uh, I think we have to build things in stages, so let's build a little mana node here to that building. And I'm going to try to lay things out the best I can. I want to do things in 90 degrees as best as possible, although some things will snap like that. That's okay. And we'll have the mana well pump things out now to the other buildings. A stone mine in a quarry connected to Pipeline. You said you could dig stone all day. Work first, play later. Hell yeah. Alright, let's connect these up. Done. Beautiful. The sun is setting. Uh oh, Not good. We still haven't prepared for unwanted guests. Expecting someone? All the filthiest things in this world like to come out at night. I can breathe fire, but I'm afraid you won't make it. We could use some defensive turrets. Let's hurry up, my poor, defenseless true. All right, build five walls and build two defensive turrets. Although, uh... I don't actually know uh, where the enemy will approach from. We do have different turrets, though. We have defensive turrets, raven watchtower, a balloon tower, mortar tower... And then defensive walls. We're going to need a lot of wood here. Looks like this thing's cutting out uh, about plus 400. That could be per day. Uh, we're going to need a lot more wood, I think. So I'm going to continue to cut down some trees. And also, this will make room for our walls, too. If we're going to build some walls, uh, we certainly want these to go uh, through some important areas that are cleared of trees and rocks. Again, this doesn't really play anything like... Uh, they are billions from the top down, but it certainly feels like it with, you know, having to build a little sawmill next to a forest in which blocks enemy movement. It brings in X amount of uh, wood per day or per, like, tick or time. And then also that uh, we have to defend our village against waves of enemies that uh, are kind of like purple or whatnot. Almost reminds me of my other favorite game, which is similar to They Are Billions, called, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> I always forget the title, actually. No, I, I love the game. Uh, it's called, um... Age of Darkness Final Stand. I always forget the Age of Darkness part. I always want to call it Final Stand, but there's there's more to it than that. But you're always doing a Final Stand just like in There Are Billions. And it's more of a dark fantasy version, which kind of mimics this a little bit. So uh, Age of Darkness Final Stand, and also There Are Billions are in this as well as a little bit of, uh, of course, Lightyear Frontier. Now, it says a work in progress does not represent the final look of the game. I think the only thing they could maybe uh, improve upon is just maybe, you know, spelling and grammatical errors and then maybe a few things to do with um, 
the UI popping out a little bit more, but I'm, I'm sure uh, because this is a play test, they're well aware of some things that are making improvements based on feedback. So anytime you go to Steam to download a play test or whatnot after you see these videos, uh, make sure you either leave some of your feedback here because the developers do watch these videos too, and or make sure you uh, go on their Discord or leave a comment on their uh, Steam and try to be constructive with your criticism, be positive and encouraging, and let the developers know uh, what you thought and uh, what they could improve upon and what you really enjoyed and uh, I think that's really the best way for us to get uh, even better games and honestly of all the weird games and uh, not so great games that have come out lately I think we have more things to get excited about on uh, Steam and in gaming in general than we ever have I, I truly think uh, that's an honest statement I mean I think there's just some great games that are coming out uh, we've had so many great games come out and I hope the trend continues um, you know there's always Good games, great games, outstanding games, and hopefully we get even more of those. All right, hopefully this blocks them, and I'm not I'm not sure if that will block them there, but I hope that'll do. I hope they can't sneak around a corner or something like that, like right here. But it looks like we're okay. All right, so there's one of our defensive towers, right? Little uh, ballista on a tower with some palisades there. Uh, we can also build a gate. So maybe, and I think the gate also has to be powered, so maybe we can put something like that over here. Let's go ahead and build a wall here. And I'm not exactly sure when the enemy will attack. Let's kind of do a zigzag wall a little bit. Make sure that the enemy uh, can't really hide in any nook and cranny. And we can always build multiple uh, of those ballista towers. Alright, let's make a straight section here for the gate. And see if we can put that in. There we can put the gate. Perfect. And we'll make another straight section that goes that away. And I think we'll run it around these trees to the other side. And then I'll m cut these down and mine all the stone later. Or now. Because this is in the way of us swinging to the left. So yeah, it's, it, I think it's a great time for uh, gaming, honestly. Uh, we get so many free updates for games like Stardew Valley. I think a lot of people don't know where to look. You get Supermarket Simulator. Of course, recently there was a game called uh, Content Warning that was out free from Landfall Games, which are the same folks who made it like Ultimate Battle Simulator and all these other goofy games. And I think, honestly, indie devs are the spearhead of the future of gaming. Otherwise, we just kind of continuously get the ones that uh, we're familiar with and comfortable with, although they seem to be more and more molded towards something that's not as um, enjoyable as it once was. Uh, Assassin's Creed is a good example of that. Although the Assassin's Creed games are great, and there is even... Uh, I enjoyed Mirage and thought it was wonderful, but we're starting to get more and more away from uh, uh, ingenuity and like uh, creativity for some things, and it's just kind of repetitive, which is okay. If that's what you're looking for, uh, you know, it's the same with like a good old-fashioned hamburger. I mean, you don't have to change up the recipe too much on a burger. But, uh, hey, that gives opportunity for games like uh, perhaps uh, Pacific Drive, Dave the Diver, and Dredge. Or American Arcadia, which was also a big favorite of mine uh, last year as well, to thrive. So make sure you're on the lookout for those types of things. And if something's not for you, uh, move on to the next one. Uh, but I hope everybody who watches this channel enjoys this game and the free playtest because it has so many things in it from games that I've enjoyed before. Um, I don't know why, but this also reminds me a bit of Manor Lords too, because eventually we're going to be making houses for people and kind of caring for them and giving them jobs, even though it uh, plays differently. Okay, let's connect this gate together with the mana well there, and then that should power the gate. I think the defenses also need to be powered, so we'll work on that shortly. Just going to power these gates real quick. There we go. And I'm going to try to power that defense over there too, just right off the edge of the uh, of the quarry. Very nice. Outstanding. Not to mention, folks, there are some amazing old games out there, too, that are old but gold. And old in 2024 means that, like, games, for example, like Hellblade, even though it's really not that old, and with the sequel coming, there's no wrong time to play a game that uh, everybody praised and thought was amazing. Like, for example, Red Dead 2. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, place our tower here. Actually, uh, if I get these trees out of the way, we might be able to cover two sections. And again, there's a gap in the fence there, isn't there? But I don't think the enemy will be able to make it through that, but I guess we'll experiment and see. Because these creatures aren't necessarily little bugs or, like, little humans. They're actually, I don't know, it, it's on the scale of, like, Godzilla, in a way. It's like Mothra trying to bust through the wall. There we go. 
Perfect. Okay, let's build that last uh, tower there. And then we'll build some of the other things that we saw on the screen too, like the Raven Tower. And let's build one more defense. Even though it's not required, let's build one more here too. There's a large section of wall here that I think we should defend. And anything else I think we could, ta uh, we could take on. We could tackle that. Let's go ahead and build a Mana Well connection here. And then we'll build another one over here. There we go. Alright, a few more things for defenses that we saw. We have a Raven Watchtower. Uh, that'll give us a warning. The Raven will see danger from afar. You know what I do wish is we could put down the building and the blueprint before a building was uh, constructed. We're short on stone though, so we've got the Balloon Tower uh, firing at nearby enemies. Well, looks like that's got some pretty good range too. Although I, I'm kind of happy with our starter ballistas, really. Uh, the balloon covers a huge area, though, so it might be good to be near, like, uh, this section over here. We can double down on those defenses. Oh, and then we had a mortar tower, too. So we got mortars to boot. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can do some mining. Can I assist with mining? Ah, yes, I see in the upper left corner, safety protocol, build uh, defensive turrets for balloons. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can assist with gathering stone a lot faster. And each balloon was a total of... Those balloon towers are 40, so we're going to need 80. So let's quick do some mining. Okay, and let's build those towers. So we'll build one, I think, here. And does that auto-connect to the well if it's next to it? It does not, so we'll need to make the little connection. Just like that. So don't forget to make your connections. And we'll plop down a balloon over here, too. And I wonder if we could daisy-chain these together. I think we should be able to do that. And indeed, we can. We should be safe now. Whatever comes close to this turret will regret it. And if the turret shoots at us? It won't. I will keep silent, but remember, it's an anxious kind of silence. Okay, girl. Don't you worry. I got you. Okay, we need a lot more wood. The smell. True. Something really bad is going on here. I can uh -oh. see that. The monsters are coming out of this nest. It's not about the monsters. Something much worse. As if all magic in this place... We have to destroy the nest. Otherwise, the settlers don't stand a chance. Otherwise, nobody stands a chance. Uh, purge the island from monsters and their nests. Build houses three. Oh, our defenses are working. Oh, wait, is the gate electrified? Or is the balloon tower doing that? Not exactly sure how we can close the gate. Ah, oh, there we go. Open gate or close. Close the gates! I was hoping it'd be automatic, but I guess not. Alright, that's manual. I'm gonna get out there and fight him. Defend the wall! Enemies are at the gate! That looks like we can even stun enemies, too. I feel like uh, it might be a wise idea to uh, move all the trees out of here just so we can see better. It looks like we can also repair. So we got to do all the repairs ourselves. Oh, and that takes a long time. Look at that. Well, maybe if we can get some homes for some villagers, maybe they can work on that. So let's repair one and see if there's an auto repair option. Imagine repairing all this wall. You may as well demolish it and just rebuild it at that point. Save yourself time. Okay, let's build some villager houses now. We've proven that we can defend the settlement. And now we're going to build some houses. Some hooses, bud. Go uh, plop those down over here. Let's go ahead and rotate them so they look nice. A little unique feel to them. Ah, uh, of course, we need more stone. And these also require mana. There we go. 
Look at that mana flow. Really nice looking house. I like how some of these buildings, of course, look like they're made out of the ship. The main building makes sense that it looks like a ship because it's literally made from our ship. So that's cool. And we'll keep on mining stone. Actually, I wonder if there's anything around here we can move out of the way. Oh, uh, yeah. We got some spots here. Well, we may as well clear out all this part of the colony from any sort of, uh, you know, debris. There we go. Trying to see if uh, we can do other attacks on the trees. It does seem if we hold left click, it does do a big swing, but it's not as effective as the small chops. Yeah, that's just more time efficient. We also have a map. Let's take a look at that. So, as we saw in the intro, there was a bunch of uh, islands around us that we can go and explore. Since our tutorial area, it looks like there's some pathways to go down to an area where there's a mountain, more plains, more forested areas. And then, possibly a way to get down here where I see what looks to be maybe water and more lands that possibly we can't claim because it's completely covered in the purple mist. But I do believe the goal of the game, of course, is to uh, get all the way through that, so... Oh, looks like um, we need to send a raven. Ravens can be sent to a northern clan to carry the good news that the colony is ready for habitation. Ah! So we have a, a, a house, but nobody can live here yet. So we need to uh, get rid of enemy nests. We need to uh, get a port activated with a blue crystal. Uh, dark stones tainting the colony or two. And then place for colonists, we need 30. So we can at least start with the homes. We can get that done. So let's get some houses down. Doing a new build neighborhood, unfortunately. You know it'll lack that subtle quality. That's a modern day problem. And we'll just daisy chain those two together. Oh, went over to the left. Oh, sorry, bud. Kind of out in front of your house here. Let's see if there's a demolition option. Uh, is there a way to destroy? Oh, yeah. Oh, that was easy. Perfect. I hope they will have better lives here. No hunger, no deadly frost. No. Do you know how many have said this before? Generation after generation. It's good to finally understand them. Let's go. All right. I think for the most part, the camp is clear of most shenanigans. Wow, look at this open right here. This open uh, spot. I don't think the enemy was able to get through there, but let's make sure we uh, build some defenses on that way. Oh, yeah, there we go. And we can spend all day repairing, but honestly, we'll, I think, do that later. Or re replace the walls when they're completely destroyed. It seems to be more worth our time. Okay, let's go out there and destroy some stuff. Purge the island with the monsters and their nests and build a water well. Well, we'll be back for that. Let's go see some combat. So we do have the ability to block. We have the ability to run. We have a circle menu, which just allows us to select our dwarf and the mech and the dragon, of course. And with the dragon, we can, I think, scout things out. Uh, yeah, there we go. So we can light their little base on fire. The enemy will try to attack us uh, by throwing rocks. Wow. Little fire started doing some good damage here. Look at that. Ripping the base right apart. Look at that. Dragon has a limited attack, though, on the fire. I guess we have to use it in uh, phases like that. There's a cooldown for it. But it does seem entirely possible to send out the dragon and uh, destroy things from afar. Which is kind of cool. If we play this multiplayer, I wonder if uh, other players can control the dragon. But I assume it's multiple people with mechs. We have survived. And the clan council wants to send settlers here? That's what I believe. I'm a bit worried as well. But oh, who are we to criticize the verdicts of the noble council? They must have had their reasons. Well, they might have. And we have our tasks. To dig a well. To build houses for the settlers. We will get ripped apart by wild beasts. But at least we know where they are coming from. And we can destroy their nest. What's that? Dark stone. A concentration of dark magic. Maybe it would be better not to leave it here. You're right. I think that monster and stone are made from the same source. Ooh, berries. Uh, take the dark stone. Oh, that's right. There was a stone back at their um, at their little camp over here. And it's marked with the yellow beacon, so that's good.
There's our dark stone. All right, let's head back and build that well. Now, I'm assuming we could also get upgrades for the mech and possibly different weapons, as I've seen the abilities in the uh, trailer itself and some of the gameplay footage showing that the uh, mech can actually kind of fly and get boosted across the map a little bit, which is nice. All right, let's build that well. There it is. Oh, looks like it should be near the homes. Or... I'm not sure what the blue circle means. Should it be near a home? It can't be too close. Well, we'll build it there and see what happens. Oh, it's a mana well. Oh, I thought it was for water. This must be where the folks can come get uh, mana then. Let's build a little... Uh... Dear host, when we asked you for something to drink, you gave us plain water, you twit. For that, we will go to your well, and right there, without much ado, take a... What? Examine a mysterious ancient tower. Alright. Where would that be? Up there, it looks like. I wonder if I could jump our walls. No. We'll have to go through the gate. Looks like a shrine there. Looks like a lot of these things do have meaning, and we'll have to find that out as we play more, which I'm totally locked in to play more. What do you think of the game so far? Let me know down below. What do you think of the music, the voice acting? What do you think of the cutscenes, the animations? I'm certain that this is one of the ancient Escoim ports. These half buildings, half machines guided airships and served as a harbor. It doesn't look too damaged by the Great Rapture. I think I can get it running. We can use this port to guide our people. Your people. That looks like another cave there, but it's destroyed. But yeah, I'd like to know from you what you think down below. I'd love to reply to some of your comments, and uh, otherwise, just let me know how your day is going and what you've been playing lately. What other games would you suggest for the channel? And uh, what are some of your favorite games, like racing, simulation, Something's not survival? Right here. The tower is saturated with dark magic. This crystal is the source of it. Let's take it off. Okay. Let's do just that. Remove the dark stone. Get out of here, pal. All the gearing looks good, but we need a navigation stone for the port to function correctly. Navigation stone. I read about it. Let's search the crash site. Perhaps the navigation stone is still there, buried among the rubble. But if we want to find the wheel, we have to look for it near the airship. Dwarves used such stones in their airships, haven't they? Yes. Ooh, that's why we are going to the crash site. Oh my god, you can pet the wolf. Aww. Game of the year. <laughs> that's cool. I don't know if we get anything for that other than it being cute, but uh, let's get back to the mech. Okay, so back to the airship then. Let's see if we can take fall damage here. Oh yes, we can. There's a little bit of fall damage. Right now we're at 905 health. This drop brings us down to 900, so really not too bad. I think we can actually get out of the mech and repair uh, like we did at the beginning of the game, so it's not really that big of a deal, honestly. All right, so back to the crash site. Let's see if we can find a blue crystal to put for the navigation stone uh, where it was up at the top. Here. Navigation stone is not here. It must have fallen off somewhere else. We must find it. I have an idea where it might be. Okay. So we need to open the circle menu. Oh, Ragna's going to be flying now. A little awkward to select them. You, you really have to move your mouse a lot in order to uh, get the game to accept that. So hopefully they make the sensitivity a little different in the future. But again, this uh, seems completely playable with a controller. Almost more comfortable that way as it does play a little bit like... Uh, this view has no comparison to the closed spaces of the Great Dwarven Library. Spyro? Does it play like Spyro? Yes, we're playing Spyro right now. <laughs> oh, looks like our dragon friend's getting a little tired. Oh, there we go. Stamina at the bottom. Interesting, they play a little differently. Now, what are we looking for? 
Explore the small island for a steering wheel. Ooh, that's, uh, well, it could be down here. There's some ruins here. Can I burn that off? No? Okay. I like the music, too. Oh, I see it's marked up there as well. That's what we're looking for. Hey there. Got it. Now back to the grumpy dwarf. Let's see if we can light a tree on fire. Just curious. Hmm. Seems like we damaged the tree, but nothing happened. Back to the dwarf. Oh, looks like we can fly faster. Oh wait, open the circle menu. Can we just fast travel? I oh, I kind of enjoyed flying faster. A little bit more like using a, what felt like a mount, except we weren't on it. That was more enjoyable, honestly, than the fast travel. Alright, let's head back up top. This also, again, does remind me of another game that I may have mentioned earlier called Rift Breaker. And perhaps that was a better example for what this game feels like to me over They Are Billions and uh, Age of Darkness Final Stand. Since that game does allow you to pilot a mech and then the mech will actually talk to you, which kind of reminds me of the dragon, and then there's building walls and defensive turrets and mining and such like that. That's what it feels like. What is this? Slightly tainted fox. The fox can be healed. Ability to heal slightly tainted foxes. Can we fix you up there, buddy? Where do you go? Hey, buddy. You okay? Look, this fox is acting strange. The discoloration of the fur. It looks like the monsters that attacked us. Maybe it caught something from them. Anyway, we don't have time to deal with foxes. That's a fox? But maybe we do have Seems time like to a see wolf. what is going on in these islands. Please, let's take a closer look. Well, I guess I did call that one a wolf earlier, but that's because uh, the body certainly looks like a wolf, but the nose certainly is a fox. All right, find out how to heal foxes. Well, shouldn't we finish this up first, though? Our mana quest. Let me get the navigational stone. There we go. It fits. Did it do anything? Nothing. Just as I expected. Wait a minute. The Eskoim also used mana. Let's connect a pipe and see what happens. Yeah, good idea. And let's build the mine. Let the mana flow. There's light. What do you know? It worked. Well, and our first colony is ready. We can send a raven and wait for the colonists. Oh, wow, nice. Send a raven to the dwarves. Now, how do we do that? We may do that from a tower we'll need to build inside the village. Perhaps. Let's see if we can do a little fast travel. Hey, nice. Cool. I don't even think we took damage on that one. Okay. Let's do the construction of the Raven's Post, which could be this one, Raven Watchtower, maybe. Or we just press F to send the Raven, but I want to build this building because we got access to it. And it does need mana too. I like how he's kind of trying to cue us too by giving a little caw. Uh, we'll just do a direct connection. Perfect. All right, let's send the raven. Goodbye, little buddy. Tell him to bring money. Have a good trip. I can't believe it. I hope he succeeds. He will succeed. I believe in it. The first colony is finished. But this is just the beginning. Oh boy. That we're going into a cutscene. Meet the arriving dwarves. 
Um, are they pulling up in a limo or what? I hear a lot of noises. Oh, are they arriving up at the tower? All right, I'll be honest. At this point in the mission, we've been up and down that damn mountain like three or four times. So kind of, anno <laughs> kind of annoying to keep climbing up there without some sort of way to just blast up to the top. At this point, I'd like some sort of armored core ability to just, you know, fly all the way up or hover all the way up to the top of the hill. I mean, we've had to come up here like three or four times. This is like the old joke about your grandparents saying that uh, when they went to school, they had to go up the mountain uh, both, hill both ways uphill back at school. Okay. Oh, here they are. So they're going to walk down the hill to the village? No need for an escort? Oh, they're waving. Hey, what's up, brother? All right, cool. And here's the ruins. Escoim ruins. They have stood here for thousands of years. Look here. This looks like some Escoim... Blueprint of some kind of thrust engine. Ooh. I know how to improve my armor using this technology so that it could jump much higher. Well, look at that. The workshop to see if it works, or it will be a waste of resources. About the damn time I said I was getting annoyed going up and down this hill, we probably won't have to do it for much longer. Let's take a little bit more damage there. Shortcut. Okay. Place a workshop in the base. Oh, it looks like we're going to be attacked. Who nighttime be coming soon? Workshop. Is that under settlement? Which one is that? Sawmill and the stone mine. Oh, I want to build that mortar tower too. That'd be sweet. Hmm. Well, I don't necessarily see this workshop. Oh, our building was a little damaged. Need that to be in tip-top shape. Hmm. Can we build the workshop with this guy? Nope. Oh, there's the airship at the bottom, too. That's going to be awesome. So we get our main character, our mech, our dragon, and the damn airship to command, too. I love that. Also, is the mana low? I don't see the mana flowing everywhere. Maybe it's just a hiccup in the animation or the, the visuals, but it looks like things are flowing where they should be. At least the buildings are active. Okay. Um, place the workshop in the base. Well, do they mean main base, like here? Remove building. Oh, here. Okay, so it's an upgrade for the side of the building. So perhaps the wording could be changed to uh, upgrade the main, upgrade the workshop at the main base or something like that. I see. Again, they do show this in the video, but I'd kind of forgotten that we could throw the gears and stuff in there from our a chip. Dwarf without a workshop is like a drunk without a cup. It's a nasty way of putting it, but you've got a point. Okay, install high jump technology. You know, honestly, of any time that I've gotten stuck for a second or two, it's only a second or two in this game, so it, it, it's fairly easy to figure out without having to do a wiki or something like that, which could be annoying. Uh, let's see. High jump. There we go. Let's craft that. Also, this music, very much Dune. The uh, lady kind of yelling in the background is just Dune to me. Simple and brilliant. Why did none of us ever come up with this? Look, I can jump so high I could catch birds in flight. How on earth could we find something like this in Escoim ruins? I have no idea. Maybe the construction of the armor is based oh. on Escoim ideas. Or maybe something really strange is going on here. So it looks like we need um, iron now to start crafting some of these other things, but I can hear we're being attacked. But they're up above us? The creature up above us. Uh, gather mana at the mana spring or well. Okay. To 
repair that too. So here's our well. So we can refuel. That's cool. The uh, jumping ability also has a way to let us softly land. It has like a, a thruster so we can land safely. Wow, that takes a while to fill up. Music is popping. The hell is this? Uh oh. Well, they're breaking through. Hold on. Well, let me use my. Oh, I can't jump. Oh, I got to do the full charge. Oh, you got to do the full charge. I just want a little hop. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Frames. Frames. What the hell? Oh, okay. Uh, rip to this. Uh, I think we're looking at too many enemies at a time. Let me try to look at the ground. What the hell is this? Okay, yeah. Something going on there where I can't look at the enemy. Okay, that was weird. Hopefully that was just a hiccup with my system. I don't think that'll be a thing in the full game. Hopefully that was just me. These guys are clapping our cheeks, though. It looks like there's a timing system with the multiple attacks. I still can't figure that out. I think we're supposed to attack with the two white bars are at the edge of the map. Or that little uh, thing there. These guys are devastating the camp. At this rate, I may as well put a damn tower in. It's got me up against the wall. Let's build a defensive tower. Oh, right on the right on the uh, the mana pipeline. I think the ballista tower and our defenses are doing more damage than we could. Until we get better upgrades. Okay, sorry about your house, bro. I guess we gave the all clear a little too soon, but uh, oh, here comes more. So it looks like at night a storm starts. The balloons take advantage of that storm to then send out the electricity to stun the enemies. So the balloon towers do a little stun lock. I can't figure out this attack system at all. Oh, wait, I just figured it out. This whole time I was being a goober. Yeah, I think I figured it out. Our mech took a lot of damage. We're almost dead. Let's switch back to our friend. And repair. Hey, this mech's taking a hell of a beating from that uh, crash earlier to being attacked by multiple enemies. The damn fine piece of equipment right there. Uh, this is cool. I really like this. I hope now in the future that we'll get things like stone walls and upgraded turrets. And uh, maybe perhaps ways to upgrade them uh, directly and indirectly where we can make different tiers of turrets. But also maybe give more power to some of them by boosting what they can do with mana, etc, etc. Alright, looks like we're all good to go. So yeah, we got to rebuild this wall here. Uh, look again. Look at how slow it is just to repair. I mean, that takes forever. So I'd rather just maybe delete the wall. And but definitely rebuild some homes here. So we got to build another house. Let's get that rebuilt. Not sure what the bonus is from having settlers, but I think it might be uh, something to do with perhaps a higher output. There we go. Cool. All right, well, we'll get everything all fixed up and uh, go talk to the guild chief. In fact, let, let's just do that now since it's daytime. And we'll take advantage of that. And we'll see what happens. Uh, are you the chief? I, the head of this guild, congratulate you on achieving your first task as first dwarf. I'm going to fulfill my duty to the end. True. While flying the ship, I sensed a foul scent from the nearby island. Perhaps this is a lead for preparing the next grounds for settlement. Thank you, Mother. Don't forget that convincing non-kin chiefs of other guilds will not be such an easy task. For the sake of our clan, I hope you succeed. I will succeed. Thank you, ma'am. All right, well, we got our orders then. Keep clearing and uh, keep bringing freedom to dwarf kind. <laughs> Ooh, look at this. 
We've also got ourselves a map section, quest, inventory too, so we can see all the things that we've collected and the ability to craft too. So this game has, you know, quote unquote crafting where we can make maybe key items and stuff. And that's what those berries are for, it looks like. Plant uh, resistant to low temperatures. Interesting. Components too and miscellaneous items as well as some things about our characters. So there is leveling up. Uh, there we go. Oh, unassigned level points. Oh, we could level ourselves up multiple times. So leveling up our character, probably pretty important. But we can also level up our mech. The mech's going to be doing a lot of fighting, so I'm going to just bring the mech immediately up to like level maybe, uh, I don't know, 12. And then we'll try to level up the other ones too. So, yeah. And I think this might give us extra stamina, maybe increased range at doing things. There we go. Yeah, the mech's much better now. Cool. Don't forget to do that too. I don't know. How much better that made us. Oh, look, that raised our health to 2,100. We were at 900 before. Intrude on your warm family conversation. Wow. But your mother is right. There's a mysterious smell coming from that island. My, my bad. Maybe that increases our repair speed? I'm not sure. But a lot more secrets await us in this game, and I can't wait to play them in the future. Or this game in the future and learn more about them in the future, too. All right, guys, thank you very much for joining me for our first look here at First Dwarf. And uh, this playtest was really cool. Again, available on Steam, so download for free. All you got to do is go to the Steam store page and add it to your wish list and hit that request button, and you should be granted right away. Otherwise, there's multiple demos, and I really want to play this one when it comes out. I'll see you all next time. Thank you very much for watching.